Okay, yesterday what I did is I built John Zog's DVD charger modifications to it. it. The charger cord was was basically a power supply cord I have for a different project that didn't work, so I let him use that for it, and it didn't charge the battery. It would only run the thing. The reason why is because if you went back in my last video, you would have saw that 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 is a manual, it does not go off of 12 volts like a car does to charge. It goes off 9. So what I end up doing is buying a voltage regulator and a few resistors to stuff it down to 9. Anyway, it stuffs it down, but it's not 9, it's 8.92, which is close to 9. I don't know if it's the dropout voltage is getting into it where, where, where it's past its maximum output voltage, it might be because it's because 12 minus 3 is 9 and 3 is the minimum differential voltage on it, input output differential. Anyway, we'll take a look at it and see what it looks like. As you see there, I got my probes onto the connector that goes to the DVD player. Then I got my meter hooked to it, and it's giving us 8.92 volts out DC. But it's good enough to charge the thing, because it did charge it. And, it, and, and then when I go, then over, overnight, I turned it on, and it would uh, turn it on without the power being on it. The cord. Which, which before it didn't even do that at all. Anyway, this circuit only has like three components in it. I don't know why they couldn't put that inside the case, something like that. If I probably wanted to save money, it was saying, think, thinking that they could get a, a power supply that would that would step it down for it, and then they don't need to do it. But then again, they lose feature of charging off the car. This could actually charge off the car if you wanted it to. And basically, it does a pretty good job. It does get a little hot when it's when it loads on it. I'm feeling it right now, and it's cold. It's because there's no load on it. When there's no load on it, it'll be cold. Gets a little warm. There's a heat sink on it. I put that I put that on it because I thought it might need something to dissipate the heat better than just leave it in bare without no heat sink. It's a clip on one. It, it was these 99 cent ones. You pack a three. I only need like one. The resistors each different two different values. And they come pack a ten of each, you know, and need like one out of it. But it wasn't that bad. It was like sixty-five cents for the whole pack of ten. And yeah, this cord here come from there's two different types of cord on here because John wanted to make the cord longer. So what we did is we ended up taking a audio video cord for a TV and using it to transfer power to it. We cut the ends off there. This had yellow end on it. And we cut it off and we soldered it onto the board there. And that made it well transfer the output power of it to it into this cord here and it goes into the DVD player. And it allows you to pull with the DVD player and it allows you to charge the battery or play the DVD. On it. This power supply is 2 volt, 2 amps on, not 2 volts, 12 volts at 2 amps on the one right there. This here is 12 volts to 2 amps, and the thing is like what, 9 volts at 1.5 amps, so it's getting like a half amp more, which is good. It's even better.
It doesn't need to be two amps. It needs to be at least probably 1.5. Maybe not even 1.5. Some of that stuff's just estimated and just probably given as a rule with, mm. with the one that they got for it. That comes with the DVD player. And I hope it didn't, I hope it didn't last a long time on battery. We don't know until John gets home. And this, this regulator here is not a regulator. It's a, you could have probably used Elm 3 and 7, I bet. But the thing is, you'd be at its maximum limit. You could be. There's a chance of it doing that because it's saying it needs 1.5 amps. That's basically what an LM317 gives out. It can handle up to 1.5 amps. So I went to the 5 amp one, which is. They had a 2 amp one, I was so. I can't remember what amp was. It was less than 5, and it was like cheaper for some reason. Odd reason. Don't know why. Weird. Anyway, this one here because it's meant to handle up to five amps, which is a good thing to have, so that it, it will. Now it's at nine point. 9.8.92 going back for 8.93 let's take that on the solder it just said uh, just has a couple resistors in it you probably can't even see the resistors but the wires are covering all up on there yeah Let's see if I can get a better view of it. See a little bit of it. Not that much of the wires in it cover it all up. And the heat sink too. That's it. And hopefully when it gets when he gets home, we'll have to ask him to see how uh, see how it played. And that's how you get a stubborn DVD player to charge on a certain voltage that it doesn't want to charge on. That that could be all because it wants to I believe the only reason why they did this was because they didn't want to the battery charging circuit itself couldn't one on twelve, so they want it on nine. They probably have a circuit in there, either comparator or analog to digital converter that takes it and reads the voltage going into it before it goes anywhere else, and then checks to see if it's greater than a certain point. And if it is, then send it to that area. Otherwise, turn off turn off the charger part or something like that. It probably goes to the battery, but it's probably only like a nanosecond long, so it doesn't harm it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you like it.